lay down
is our prayer, be that we have faith of the mustard seed. Yeah, you do. And Lord, I, I'm so glad that we, we have a time we can go to, no matter what the circumstances, no matter what, no matter what the devil tries to say to you, he says, there's nothing you can't do. I go to a God in prayer that he knows my every care. He said he, he said he answers our prayers today. And I'm so thankful yeah, today. Are you oh,
talking about the greatest preacher to ever walk the face of the earth. Mm -hmm. One who created the earth was by the word of God, which became flesh. And yet people did not like what he was saying and went away from him. And it's hard to imagine. You hear messages from people they give their heart, their life. They bleed and sweat and 
and, 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 and die trying to get the word to people. And people still treat it as if it's yesterday's old red newspaper is going away. One day, they'll give an account for it. Our work can be a testimony unto them or against them. We don't have a choice as to which it would be. But we do the best we can. We preach what God gives you to preach. Some God is not going to force them here to make that choice. Amen. He greets me every Sunday with a smile. Grace will be open another time. Still be each resting.
Ja, schau mal.
my daughter called and was talking to my wife. And uh, we got talking about what uh, cir her circumstances in this life and about waited too long. And I got up and said, man, it, I got to go. I got to eat it. <laughs> I ran in the kitchen, heated up what we had earlier, and ate, and didn't take my shot or my pills, so I'm a little blurry eyed tonight. Bless bear you. with me. But, but as I was sitting there getting ready and in front of my wardrobe, and I had the door open, and on my well, half of the door there, I got how many more months, years I got, months I got to work so I, I can retire. And I was looking at that, and I'm Say, well, geez, old pizza, so I can just go ahead and mark off tomorrow because tomorrow's March. I can get rid of February. Now I'll wait until the morning. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Brother Dave, let me never see that. Man, that's true. Yeah. That's right. My plans that me and my wife are making is really funny that Mr. Johnson talked this morning about having a camper. <laughs> <laughs> and our plans are after I retire to do some camping. I told my wife, I said, I'll camp underneath two conditions. We're home Sunday for church, and I'm only camping Monday through Thursday. I don't want to be out there with wild I'll people in this world. <laughs> but I may never see that. That's right. Amen. And I keep losing my Facebook. Page. <laughs> but after a while, it's going to be a change. After a while. There, there, there's some songs in my life that really, really... Uh, uh, move my spirit. And I like to read you uh, uh, a couple verses tonight, if I can find which ones uh, uh, of the song. It says, Surrounded by his glory, what will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus, or in all will I be still? Will I stand in your presence, or to my knees will I fall? Will I sing hallelujah? Will I be able to speak at all? I can only imagine. I can only imagine when that day comes and I find myself standing in the sun. I can only imagine when all I, all, all, when all I will do is forever and ever worship you. I can only imagine. Mm -hmm. That's our dream, church. That's our promise. One day after a while, we're going home. Man, amen. Man. You know, and, and, and we're not going to be uh, uh, too bothered by the things of this world along the way, but uh, there are going to be some heartaches and troubles along the way in our walk. And just a little bit of word tonight to help the church here tonight. And I want to read first out of Psalms 30, uh, a couple of verses. It says, I will exalt thee, O Lord, for thou hast lifted me up. It has made my foes to rejoice, and has not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord my God, I cry unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought up my soul from the grave, and hast kept me alive, that I should not go down into the pit. Amen. Sing unto the Lord, ye saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. Amen tonight. We, we got one that uh, is going to stand beside us. Uh, no matter where we go, no matter what we do, uh, he's going to be right there with us. You know, sometimes I, I hear Brother Joey talk and I hear Brother Dave talk and about being picked on a little bit at work. <laughs> you know, if you're a Christian, you're, you're going to be picked on a little bit. Yep. But you know, one day after a while, I plan on, matter of fact, it's four years and ten months. I can tell you right down to the month. Brother Dave's only got just a little while, and he's going he's gonna to step out of that place. And all the ones that made fun of Brother Dave when he was there, one day he's going to say, boy, I wish Brother Dave was here so I could ask him this question. Yeah. Even though they made fun of him, even though they come along, they'll say, a little guy will come in and say, oh, we just lost this guy. He was a real doozy, man. We're glad he's gone. All he did was talk about Jesus. But there'll be a day that they'll remember the things that we've said to them. Amen. Amen. And how the love of God has shown through us to them. So our foes, even though they think they got the upper hand, we're a winner. Sure. We're a winner either way. Amen. I want to have a talk with Brother Neil 
uh, as soon as I can about being a winner either way. Amen. You're a winner Amen. now, and you'll be a winner when you enter into the kingdom. Amen. Amen. In a little while, it'll be so. Listen. Last time I preached, I was in 2 Corinthians, and that's where we'll be tonight, in chapter 5. I'm going to read what it says in uh, chapter 4, the first verse. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, we have received mercy, we faint not. Amen. 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 There's a work for us to do, church. <laughs> Amen. And we need, if we follow the Spirit of God, that work will be easy. But when we try to get the cart in front of the horse, it doesn't work too good. Amen. It ain't, it, that horse, you know, ain't gonna, he ain't going to go. He's going to hit that and he's going to stop. Yep. Amen. You can beat him, you can do whatever you want. He ain't going to go. Amen. But we'll be in chapter 5 tonight. We're going to read some here. And it says, uh, verse 7 and verse 1, it says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle, what were dissolved, we have the building of God in a house not made with hands, eternally in heaven. Amen. For in this we grow earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is of heaven. If so, be that uh, that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in the tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for uh, that we sh we would, but unclothed, but clothed upon the maturity might be swallowed up in life. Yep. Now he that hath wrath of us for the self same thing is God, who also hath given on us the earnesty of the Spirit. Therefore we are always conflicted, knowing that whilst we are at home in this body, we are absent for the Lord. We walk by faith and not by sight. Amen. 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 We are uh, confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that with uh, present or uh, oh, or absent, we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or to be bad. Now let's skip down to verse 17 here. It says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And all things are of God who have reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and have given to us a ministry of reconciliation. So we look at this tonight, and I'll tell you how it came about this. A uh, uh, guy, uh, guy came up to me and, uh, and he said, did you think that you have uh, uh, wrenched your most prized possession that you'll have in this life? He goes, you've been around for a while. He goes, have, have you received the best thing in this life yet? And I told him no. <laughs> and he said, well, you've got time. And I says, my, my, my best moment in this life would be my last breath. My last breath would be my greatest thing in this life because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. And that's my heart's desire is to be with the in the presence of the Lord, and I hope it's yours also, that no matter what he has us to do, we're going to do it, because he bled and died on that old wooden cross for us. Right. If he would have came and done all the miracles in the world, Bless and not died on that cross, it wouldn't have been a, a, it wouldn't have been a sacrifice. Yep. The sacrifice wouldn't have been there. Yep. But he went the whole way for us, therefore we should have, go the whole distance for him. So we're we're going to be out into this world, and we're going to we're going to see things, and sometimes it's kind of hard to keep the mouth shut, and <laughs> sometimes we need to. Yeah. Sometimes we need to hear Brother Johnson say this all the time that he'd be in conversations instead of saying something, he'd just walk away <laughs> because he didn't want to cause or stir things. Amen. That's right. 
But we walk by faith and not by sight. Kind of reminds me of Brother Abraham, doesn't it? When Brother Abraham, when God came out and blessed him, he said, I'm seeking for a city not made with hands. Amen. And how faith, he was the father of faith. And how we walk and we believe and we talk and everything that we do, we can be faithful unto Jesus Christ. Amen. Empowered. Empowered by the Holy Spirit. Amen. We can't do it on our own. It takes the Spirit of God to God. Amen. Amen. And without that Spirit, we'd be most men miserable. I mean, I tried to put the horse in front, the cart in front of the horse many times. And, and it went down in defeat, trying to reach somebody for the Lord. And I found out through time, through years, and, and through things that we have to wait upon Him. When I first got saved, I wanted everybody saved. I had to go to work, and they'd say, come on, let's go get a beer, Brayden. I'd grab their hand, and they go, look, it doesn't rub off, let me tell you about Jesus. And they didn't walk away from me, you know. Because it was such a, di a, a difference in my life from that moment, that night, from the drugs and the alcohol to wanting to read the Bible and go to church and tell people about Jesus Christ, that they couldn't understand that, Brother Dave. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we'll give me six months. My own mom even told me, I'll give you six months here. <laughs> six months and you'll be back out there drinking. Huh? <laughs> you went by and said, Mom, I'm still here. Amen. <laughs> And when are you going to get in church, Mom? I believe, I pray. I said, Mom, when are you going to get in church? When are you going to accept Christ? Anybody can believe and pray, but you've got to accept them into your heart. Amen. Amen. So we got a work to do. Family, work, people that we need. Uh, sign a book, for example. You know, they got a little piece of Jesus when they talk to you. Yeah. I know that. Amen. I know you. I know what you would say, yeah. or I'm leading to what you would say. Yeah. I don't know what you'd want to say, but, but we have this old earthly house right now that it, 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 it uh, uh, got changed when the indwelling of the Holy Spirit came into it, and it changed the inner man in us, and now that we go out and we, do a, we become a fisher of men, and we're out looking for those who are without, that don't know Jesus Christ. Right. My wife doesn't know it yet, but I got to get a new Bible before I go camping. <laughs> Big I want to be prepared. I want to be sitting out there around my little fire and somebody comes by and says, Hey, how you doing? Hey, you got a minute? <laughs> I want to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. That song, while Bill was standing in his all. Could you imagine it? Just looking into his eyes. One day, and seeing the one that bled and died for us. One day, after a while, it's going to happen, church. This ain't a fairy tale. No, no. This is the truth. And it's the truth that the world needs to hear. That's right, man. We need to be like that little light that, that, that uh, is held up so people can see. That little song, that little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine, let it shine. So the whole world can see, whoever we come in contact with can see it and can hear it and witness it by what we do with our body and that. And one day after a while, we'll all appear in front of the judgment seat of Christ and we'll give an account. I want my record to be as good as it can be. Yeah. A young man taking that test tomorrow, uh, he, he wants to get one point above passing. That's what he wants. Amen. But see, I don't want to be just one point enough to get in. I want to be able to work for the Lord. Amen. I want to be used Amen. for the Lord. I want to do things for the Lord. Have we all money to water along the wall? Yes, we have. Have we all made mistakes? Yes, we have. But it's not where we, what we do. It's where we end up, church. On our knees, asking God for his forgiveness. For the Bible there says, If any man in Christ... He is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. There's a change that takes place in man. It better be a change that takes place. Amen. And see, that change can get better and better and sweeter and sweeter uh, as we go. You know, if we, Bible says we have not because we ask not. 
Hell, that's the last time that we've not asked for a new car, but asked that we can get a little bit closer to them. Or asked to be able to be led a little better in our reading or, or our studying or witnessing. When was the last time we asked God for those things that would make a difference in this world? I'm satisfied where I'm at in my life because I know this is where God's got me. As far as my job and my family. So I'm satisfied. There's a peace about it. And when you can get there, brother, you got something. I don't want to worry about what the other guys got at work and I'm not going to worry about what they're going to have or where they're going to go or what they're going to do. That guy said, well, why don't you drive a new truck? And I said, well, I probably could if I didn't give money to the church. He said, well, you don't not give money to the church. And I said, giving money to the church is more important than me having a new car. Because let me tell you why. Somebody will come through the door and they'll hear the preached word of God and they can receive Jesus Christ into the heart. But you, you, you go do what you need to do. And I'm going to do what I need to do. Amen. I said, one day you'll sit in front of God in judgment. Remember that. And I tell them all the time that there's no out in this thing, and the thing that you need is Jesus Christ in your life. Amen. Because it makes a difference. Yeah. It says that all the things that God has reconciled unto us himself, Jesus Christ has given to us the ministry of reconciliation. In verse 21, For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Amen. And, and the key words there are the last two words. In Him. Amen. Not yeah. in me. Not in my knowledge. Well, that, that wouldn't get you very far. But <laughs> some people are intelligent. Some people can speak better. Some people can read better. Some people can do this or that better. See, that's not what Jesus called. See, Jesus didn't go up to Jerusalem, up to the to the headquarters out there and get all the smart people and bring them down and say, come on, we're going to go win souls. He went down and got them some fish. Fishermen. <laughs> yeah. Man. Somebody that's used to working and toiling and, and, and working hard. Yeah. And he took those four, started with the four, and he changed the world. Yeah, four fishermen. And he made a way. Just not for him to go to the cross, but those that were with them would carry the mission out Amen. into a lost and dying world. Yeah. Amen. And so for there, as he went into Rome and everywhere else, Jerusalem, and they got beat, and they got flogged, and they got everything else flogged. I think all of them got killed, I think. And, and, and they, yet, yet they pressed on. We need to press this thing. We need to pray and keep prayed up and, and keep seeking the Lord and keep trying to get a deeper understanding in His Word that we might be able to win one. Amen. God said, if you win one, are you done? I said, nope. I want to win another. And I want to win another. I want to win another. And I said, I don't got to be there to do it. And then I went to Brother Terry to tell him this. I told him he needed to accept Jesus Christ. Yeah, I work with all Catholics. I told him, I said, you need to accept Jesus Christ into your life. Well, I went to church, and I went through catechism, and, and I was baptized as a baby, and so on and so forth. And this is where I go every time. In 1984, in a basement in Grand Rapids, Michigan, I felt the Spirit of God coming onto me. And I accepted Him that night, and my life changed. And they'd say, well, I've never experienced something like that. And I said, you can if you just humble yourself and listen to the Word of God and accept them into your heart. Amen. We've got to have a press, church, as we go forward. You know, we, you sit at home and, and you read and you read and you read and, and, and you study and you ponder and, and you think of things to say. And then when you get up here, you know, they just... <laughs> you know, you, you forget most of it, you know, and when you sit down and say, oh, I was going to say this, I was going to say that. Let me assure you this. If the blood's been applied, you're a new creature. And Jesus loves you. He will not let your foes overrun you. And I think he wants to meet you face to face as much as we want to meet him. 
Amen. Amen. He said he did. But there's a time and a place appointed for every man to die. Then the judgment. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. So let's not get weary. Let's not get weak. I got family that need Jesus Christ. Me too. I, I, you know, and, and the thing is, you sometimes you go out here and you make friends in this world that are actually closer than your family. And the thing is, you love them, and you want them to go to heaven. But yet you can't participate in the things that they do. There are difference there. Yeah. So we got to press, and we got to press. Jesus went to that old rugged cross and took that beating and died on the cross for us. Shame on us. If we live in a country where you can walk for nothing, the people in our streets got it better than most people throughout the world. And yet we can't give ourselves over enough to call upon him to increase us. The guy at work says, I got it all. He said, no, you don't. That's the most important thing out. He said, what? I said, that's the Holy Spirit inside your body. I said, right now you're operating off your own Whatever you want to do, you're operating off that, and you're making good money, and, and you got this great, good, beautiful house, and your dad left you a million dollars, and you got all this, but it doesn't matter. I remember the Bible talking about a rich man, and he went to see Jesus, and, and Jesus said, but well, what have you done? He said, I've kept all this from all my youth all the way up, and Jesus told him to go sell what he had, yeah, and he thing. laughed. Yeah, one thing. Yeah, and he went away Sorry. crying. I'm glad I got the thing in this life that matters. Two things I'm glad I see. One, I know I got for sure. Well, I got both for sure, but one, I know I'm a child of God. Number two, I have to help me. People don't realize it's sweeter if your wife or your husband is a born again Christian also. Amen. Because there's only certain things that you can talk to about with your wife and your husband. And to pray for one another and uplift one another and guidance for one another. Yeah. So that's my message tonight. I, I hope it will help to you. That uh, one day after a while we're going to leave these old fleshly bodies. And we're going to go to a place where he's going to say, Welcome in, my good and faithful servant. And it will step into forever. Forever. And we won't have no worries about what we left behind. I know why God's so great. I don't gotta be there with my kids. I, I give back to God. I don't gotta be there with my grandkids except Jesus Christ. But I've been praying for it. And I've been praying for it. And I've been praying for it. And I believe when after I leave, those prayers will be answered. My God is awesome. Yeah. He, he, he doesn't forget about our prayers, man, when we, when we die and want. He don't forget. So let's keep pressing forward. Let's aim for the high mark. Let's light our candle. Let's be illuminated that people can see Jesus Christ. Not Terry, not Phil, not sister over there, the sister back there. But they can see Jesus Christ in us. They'll see the goodness and mercy of God through us if we allow. Amen. Amen.